image and build trust and relationships between the national government and the people of Kenya. GA officers are supposed to be champions of government policies, such as afforestation, so that we can deal with the threats of climate change. You're supposed to be at the forefront to sensitize the public on national programs such as immunization, the registration of persons, and all other services that government offers across the country. In other words, we will not expect GAO officers to participate in extraneous activities, including politics. The policy of this administration is to create a professional national government administrative organ that can serve the country impartially, equally, and in accordance with the law. Leave political matters to politicians. Politicians from across the political divide should be left to, to manage politics, to persuade each other, to criticize one another, and to do what politicians do. Our work for those who are in this sector is to provide services to the people of Kenya, irrespective of their ethnicity, political affiliation, religion, or any other connection. Having said so, as we've been told, this is the third cohort within this year, and the total of the officers that have been trained now comes to 1,397. We expect to continue with this program. We also will be training other cadres, including chiefs and assistant chiefs, who also require training to be able to effectively discharge their services in their areas of jurisdiction. The same will apply to the deputy county commissioners so that we can train them and prepare them for leadership even as they look forward towards career progression within the national government administration structure. The desire of the Ministry of the Interior and National Administration is to ensure that officers have attended the requisite promotional courses. And that is why we want to accelerate this program and as your minister, I'll do whatever is feas feasibly possible to ensure that the resources that are required for these training programs are secured from the National Treasury to make sure that we have a professional GAO as well as other services in the security sector that can serve the people of Kenya competently and efficiently. It is worth noting at this juncture that this course enhances your understanding of the relationship and linkages between the various security formations and linkages in the field and how they interact. You are now better to, in the appraisal of the security situations in the field and how best to address it. For the avoidance of doubt, GAO officers remain the coordinating agencies for all security matters. And therefore, the cooperation that GAO officers should receive from the security sector agencies cannot be overemphasized. 
we will not allow turf wars and territorial fights because this sector is so sensitive that any lapses caused by the need perhaps to one sector or one, one section of the sector to protect its interests, the lapses can cause the country irredeemable losses. And therefore, your coordination role as GAR officers will continue and will continue engaging the security agencies to cooperate with you to ensure that this is, uh, this is realized. This course is not just a course to help you do your work. It is also for your own career progression as stipulated in the revised scheme of service for national government administrative officers of 2015. The ministry is working towards mounting other promotional, promotional courses for GAO officers, and I've said, as I've said, including a diploma in public administration, DPA, senior management course, SMC, and strategic development program, SLDP. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to just highlight a few things before I conclude my remarks. That going forward, we expect to initiate policy reforms in this sector to ensure the delivery of service. I have already announced certain measures that affect the chiefs and assistant chiefs, even as they help the government to address crime, especially areas where there is runaway banditry and also the threat of terrorism. The government has taken the policy decision that police and other law enforcement agencies will work with chiefs and assistant chiefs to protect the people of Kenya and their property from criminals, cattle rustlers, terrorists, and the kind that have brought and told suffering and death to a vast majority of the people of the northern part of our country. In this regard, all chiefs and assistant chiefs will be vetted for suitability to bear arms so that they can be armed to support the security agencies in the areas that are affected by banditry and the threat of terrorism along the Kenya-Somalia border. This process begins immediately and will start with chiefs and assistant chiefs in the areas which I have mentioned. We have also taken the policy decision that every chief will have at their disposal five police officers across the country to assist them in the enforcement of law and order in their areas of jurisdiction. We have also taken the policy decision to upscale the National Police Reservice Program in all the counties that are affected by the problem of livestock rattling and banditry and the threat of terrorism. And therefore, this program, in the next few months, will be concluded to make sure that the National Police Reservice work hand in hand with the police and other specialized formations within the security sector 
that are helping us to protect our country from those who want to undermine our sovereignty and our democracy. In this regard, I also want to take this opportunity to salute our law enforcement agencies, including GAO officers, who are working under very difficult circumstances to protect our people and their property. I particularly salute those who are working in areas where there is serious risk of life and limb, not only to citizens, but also to our officers. All the NGAO officers, all the law enforcement agencies working under these conditions, you have the support of government as you undertake this special assignment. We will stand by you. We will improve on the equipment that you require to be able to combat these dangerous criminals and we will not allow any discussion from any quarter whatsoever except that which is in the national interest. I have been in those places. The risk is extremely high. The conditions and the environment and the terrain is extremely challenging. And we are not going to have a situation where bandits and criminals hold hostage our country to a level of a few instances where we have had a few officers lose their life in the line of duty. I repeat this for the avoidance of doubt. The gun, the weapon that a security officer is provided for by the government of Kenya, that weapon is to protect the people of Kenya, their lives and their property from criminals. Therefore, Use that weapon within the law. Use it within the Constitution. And the government of Kenya will, depend, will defend you, will protect you, will stand by you, because this assignment must be achieved. And for it to be achieved, we will need to stand by you, walk with you in the journey, and make sure we do not abandon you, even as you deliver this risky assignment on behalf of the people of Kenya. Therefore, in the areas that are affected by banditry and the threat of terrorism, the chiefs, assistant chiefs, the ACCs, and all the other formations will be provided with arms. They will work hand in hand with the police, the NPR, and all the other specialized formations that we are putting in place to make sure that we deal with these security threats once and for all. You have my commitment, and you have the commitment of the government of Kenya. We intend to also make a few other policy directives relating to Gauss. Therefore, I'll be meeting with all the cadres of Ngao shortly so that we can jointly agree on a roadmap on how to improve our service delivery to the people of Kenya. I am aware that a number of officers have retired or are soon retiring. And this brings a challenge that requires to be addressed urgently. The challenges of succession management will be addressed, as I have said, progressively. And the ministry will engage with the Public Service Commission to address the gaps in succession management and fill all the existing vacancies in the authorized establishment for Gauss. And this way, we expect the promotion of some officers to the next grade in a short while.
I am accurately aware, I'm acutely aware that the ACCs in particular have challenges with regard to their transport. Most of the divisions, in most of the, the divisions, and, 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 uh, there are no motor vehicles. And uh, ACCs have sometimes to, to hike lifts or to use borrowed transport. So we are addressing that as soon as possible. We already have the leasing program where we want to retain about 200 cars and acquire an equal number in the shortest time possible. And therefore, we want to ensure that within the next three months, every ACC will be provided with transport so that they can be able to deliver services to the people of Kenya. There are, of course, resource constraints, not only in the security sector, but across government. But as I have said, your work is to stick to the delivery of services and to make sure that you don't veer off from your mandate. Our work is to make sure that we look for those resources and ensure that you are equipped to deliver those services. I therefore want to thank you and congratulate you on successfully completed completion on successful completion of this parameter course to wish you well in your career and to inform you that the ministry will facilitate your career progression for those who work hard and those who remain committed to this professional calling. It has been an honor for me to serve as your minister, and I thank the president for the appointment. I also thank all the NGA officers who have sent me messages of goodwill and support, and I want to thank all the NGA officers, the regional commissioners, the county commissioners, the deputy county commissioners, the ACCs, the chiefs, the assistant chiefs, who continue to work tirelessly to help government achieve its development objectives. You need to build, you need to break new grounds, and therefore we will be requiring a bit of culture change upon uh, discussions among ourselves, we'll agree on a number of culture changes that we will initiate ourselves as a sector to make sure that we work better for the people of Kenya. Even as we speak, the NGA officers are facilitating a very important national exercise, and that is the administration of the examinations to our pupils and students in grade six, under the CBC program, grade, uh, class eight, under the 844 uh, program, and also the KCSC under the 844 program. This national exercise is continuing, and I want to ask security agencies to be vigilant and cooperate with the Ministry of Education to ensure that we have successful examinations I am also expecting GAO officers and our security law enforcement agencies to be vigilant even as we enter into the Christmas season. We cannot afford to let down our guard because it is during times like this that uh, we need to be even extra vigilant. I therefore want to end there. And before that, I just want to recognize the support that the ministry is getting from the parliamentary committee. This is responsible for National Assembly. 
uh, for national security, both at the National Assembly level and the Senate. And I, today we have uh, some of their representatives with us. I want to thank them, recognize them, and uh, commit to them that the ministry will cooperate with them, even as they do oversight over this ministry, to ensure that we collectively mitigate any risks that can lead to insecurity in our country. I particularly thank the Honorable Dido Raso, Member of Parliament for SACU, who is the Vice Chairman of the Na National Assembly Committee on Matters uh, National Security, and uh, the other two members, the Honorable Ambassador Francis Sigay, Member of Parliament for SOTIC, and the Honorable Peter Opondo Kaluma, Member of Parliament for Homabe Constituency. Asante Nisana, and thank you for coming, Waishimiwa. We will work together to deliver. I also want to thank our eight regional commissioners, your seniors, graduates, have come to witness this occasion, and I want to ask the regional commissioners to stand so that uh, they can be appreciated. Thank you very much, RCs, for coming. I wish you well, even as you serve our country, go out there, be good ambassadors of government, and we will support you, and also ensure that your working conditions and your welfare is increasingly reviewed. There are many things that we cannot say here, including how we can facilitate you at your stations other than transport. But those discussions will be entering into them shortly as soon as we launch the task force or the presidential working party on, uh, on uh, reforms in the disciplined forces because we have the police reforms, prison reforms, but also we will include GAO in that category. I want to thank in a special way the National Police College and Bakasi A Campus for facilitating the training of three Ngao cohorts of this very intense course. Our gratitude goes to the leadership of this college, led by the commandant of the college and all the instructors and the entire staff for a, well, for a job well done. It is now my pleasure to declare the Ngao's paramilitary, paramilitary training course number three of 2022 officially concluded. Thank you.